Good morning. This is Venkatesha K, Associate Professor from BNM Institute of Technology, Bangalore. The course what we are going to discuss is basic electrical engineering. Basic electrical engineering is the common subject where all the students of all the branches they must know the importance of this subject. The student can be from a computer science or electronics or a civil background or the mechanical background. The basic electrical engineering is very, very essential to be as a very good engineer. Today, we let us see the syllabus part. Syllabus part consists of the, the part A, DC circuit and the electromagnetism. DC circuit and electromagnetism. If you talk about the DC circuit, the basic concept is generally we have a source and the load. Any electrical circuit will be having the source and the load. If your source is DC supply and load, normally we prefer resistance for the DC circuits. So we are going to deal with the DC supply and the basic element, passive element resistance. What is resistance basically? Resistance is basically a property of a conductor which opposes the flow of current, which opposes the flow of current. DC source, when you talk about the DC source, we can have a DC voltage source or DC current source. DC voltage source is available in the market in the form of a batteries. batteries. So the symbol for a DC source is, we can write a DC source symbol, a voltage source is a basically a, a DC source, a battery will be available like 1.5 volt battery, 3.3 volt batteries are available. This supply, we can connect it to some resistances. The voltage source is V, resistance R1 and R2 are the resistances. <coughs> These resistances can be a bulb, it can be a bulb or it can be any heating devices or it can be any heating devices. So this particular chapter, we are going to see what is the effect of the DC current when it flows to the bulb. What may be the voltage drop across the resistances we are going to find. What is the power consumed by this resistance we can calculate or what is the energy consumption we can calculate in this circuit. The DC circuit, entire DC circuits, we are going to discuss Ohm's law, very, very basic law we are going to discuss. That's application of Ohm's law, we say V is equal to IR. Then we have a Kirchhoff's law, Kirchhoff voltage law, Kirchhoff current law. These are the principles and concepts we study in the DC circuits and problems based on that. The second is unit 1, B, part B. In the part B, that is electromagnetism. We are very <coughs> well versed with the natural magnets available. What are electromagnets basically? Take a copper wire or a copper rod or you can say take a uh, magnetic material, take a magnetic material. It can be a silicon or it can be ferrite like that. Take a copper wire and wound on it and pass the supply. That will behave like an electromagnet. Electromagnets are basically a per temporary magnets. So we want a magnetic flux linkage. Maybe we require a magnetic flux in all the basic electrical machines. Which are the basic electrical machines we have? We have a transformer with a basic electrical machine, generator, one of the electrical machine, motor. These are the three basic electrical machines we have. If you know the concepts of the electromagnetisms, this entire concept we are going to incorporate or we can study in all these three basic machines. Those are transformers, induction machine or a motor or a generator. Other name is alternator for the generator. That we discuss in the electromagnetism. And the unit two, unit two discusses about the AC supply. Instead of the DC supply, we are going to have the AC supply, single phase AC supply. We may have a AC source, to that we can connect a resistance, inductance and capacitance, the three passive elements we take here. We take the three passive elements, R, L and C. But we never discuss inductor and capacitor in the DC circuits. Why we never discuss the inductor and capacitor in the DC circuits? The only reason is, when you connect the inductor and capacitor in the DC source, it goes to the steady state. Either it goes to open, <laughs> open state or the short circuit state, closed state. So we may not discuss inductor and capacitor in the DC circuits. In the AC circuits, we have the all the three passive elements resistor, inductor and the capacitor. Then, out of these three elements, which are, which are the elements that store the energy, which are the elements that consume the power, that consume the power. You observe here, the resistance is one, 
Maybe the resistance best example is the resistive load means we have a iron box, a bulb, incandescent lamp, or any heating devices, geyser, all those are the resistive devices which consume power. But to take the inductor capacitor, it does not consume power, rather it stores power in the form of electromagnetic field in case of inductor, electrostatic field in case of capacitor. It never consumes power, it stores the power, it returns the power back to the source, return the power back to the source. So, entire in the single phase AC circuits, in single phase AC circuits, we are going to see what is the effect on these three elements, the inductor capacitor with the help of AC source. So, how we get the AC supply basically, single phase AC supply, how we get? We may be tapping the AC supply from the Bescom tower. If you take the Bescom tower, normally what will be giving? We will be giving a phase and neutral. We are going to tap the phase and neutral. Phase and the neutral, we are going to tap there. Phase and neutral, we are going to tap there. And the earthing wire is also very, very essential for the house, right? For all the appliances should be earthed properly. So, for that phase and neutral, we will be giving the best car and the ground, the proper earthing should be there. That is the individual house, they have, the, have their own independent earthing setups. So, phase and neutral will be given. There is the AC supply basically. How we get the AC power? Because in India, the power generation is AC in nature. 11 kV is the standard voltage. 11 kV is the standard voltage, which is step up to 132 kV. Then we get the 132 kV at the distribution side, again step down to 11 kV. 11 kV is far then stepped up to 440 volts or the 230 volts. Then we can make use of AC supply there. Because our, all our appliances are designed for the AC supplies point of view, it works basically in that case. That is single phase AC circuits. In the single phase AC circuits, we are going to see how these elements behave, what is the power consumption in the resistance circuit, inductor circuit and capacitor circuit. Normally, what will happen if you take an inductor, the pure inductor is not available in the market. You take an inductor, it has got the coil resistance. The coil resistance will be there basically. Even a pure capacitor is won't be available in the market. It has got some internal resistance. What we name is the equivalent series resistance of the capacitor. So, all these things we discuss in this particular chapter, that is single phase AC circuits. The next comes three phase AC circuits. Why do you want uh, three phase AC circuits? Three phase AC circuits. Our power generation is three phase in nature. It's not single phase power supply. We can generate <coughs> abundance power in the three phase form, three phase generators, or other name is three phase alternators. Three phase alternators are the circuit or the device which is going to generate the three phase power. Three phase power. <coughs> we have an alternator as a three phase power, then which are the three phase loads we have? Three phase loads. Have you come across the three phase loads anywhere? Yes, three phase induction machine is a three phase load. We can see in the floor mills. The induction machine is the major one which is going to power in the floor mill, which is going to generate electrical, gener I mean convert electrical energy to mechanical energy. What's the difference between the three phase circuits and the single phase circuits? Three phase circuits are the one where we can generate the power abundantly, abundantly. The difference between the three phase system and a single phase system is Generally, three-phase systems are highly efficient in nature. For instance, you want to buy a three-phase induction machine as well as single-phase induction machine of the same power rating, the same power rating. How you tell the power rating of a machine? We say power rating in the horsepower. That is a horsepower, HP. Three HP induction machine. <clears throat> you want to three, buy the three HP induction machine, which can be a three-phase induction machine or a single phase induction machine, both are three both are three HP in nature. Then what are the differences you are finding? Cost wise, three phase induction machines are cheaper than the single phase induction machine. So cost effectiveness will come into the picture. Second one is, the three phase induction machine, ripple torque is very, very less compared to the single phase induction machine. And harmonic content in the three phase system will be lesser compared to the single phase systems. These are the, some of the advantages what we can see in the three-phase systems. That is why we generate the three-phase power supply, transmit three-phase power supply. From that, we can get the single phase. The meaning of that is the three-phase system, if it's available for you, then you can take three single phases from that, three single phases from that. <coughs> that is about the three-phase circuits we are going to discuss. Then the unit four. Unit four is very, very important. It's a scorable here. Actually, out of in the party, out of four units, this domestic wiring and uh, measuring instruments is scorable, like 20 marks will be there in a pocket. The reason is domestic wiring, you have, you're going to read about the wirings, the electrical earthing systems, all those things, and fuse, what type of fuses. Measuring instruments, we are going to read only the three instruments. 
one is a single phase energy meter and second one is a power and power measurement meters only two if i'm correct those two meters you are going to uh, see the working principle of uh, the machine i mean the instrument basically that is in the measuring instruments in this case here it is scorable there is no any problems in this case you can concentrate on this uh, so being an engineer if you are a, if you want to read if you have to score minimum 80 marks like that in part a you can cover the unit 4 at the first stage you need to cover the unit 4 then you can come to dc circuits electromagnetism then single phase ac circuits okay comparing these two if you want to score good marks three phase ac circuit is still easier than the single phase ac circuits because content is very very less you can score very good marks in that 